Hello, my personal person. How are you doing? Thank you so much for coming back once again. I'm glad to have you in my channel. I'm glad to have you over and over. If this is your first time being around, hello and welcome. And I know we're going to have a good time. And don't forget to join us. Be a family. Be our family. Join this family. Let, let's just grow. Uh, today in this um, new Bible study, I'll be giving you the list of things to pray for if you want to get married. So grab your pen and grab your notebook so you can put this information down. You can even download this teaching so you can think about it over and over, listen to it over and over, and share with, with, with someone you feel they need to hear this information. So point one, pray that you heal from your trauma. So some of these traumas occurred when you were young. Some traumas occurred when you were, gro when you were growing up. Yeah, as much as there are those who suffered traumas mostly when they were kids, mostly why it becomes a, an issue when you are young is because you are, you are defenseless. You can't help yourself. So now when you grow up, you feel like you need to always save yourself and you're overdoing it. And it does happen. And because we Christians, we don't even think that we, we, we are dealing with our childhood trauma. We feel like we, I'm just doing what's right. I'm protecting myself. And Jesus is here to protect us that's what he's doing and so it's important to understand that jesus is, has a role in our life so i'd like us to go quickly to jeremiah 18 jeremiah 18 uh, verse 1 this is the word that came to jeremiah from the lord verse 2 go down to the potter's house and there i will give you my message verse 3 so i went down to the potter's house and i saw him working at the wheel Verse 4, but the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Amen. So you can go to Jeremiah and read it again. You can write that down, that verse. You can revisit over and over and over and over. This is just showing us that God has an idea of how we are supposed to be like. And the devil saw because it is something the devil doesn't know everything my love the devil does know that god is perfect and god wants to see beautiful things happening and so if god since you are created like you have to know this also god has called human beings god created a human and god has a perfect intention for every one on earth even those that you see that this person is terrible this one sounds like evil but god loves people and God wants to see people change you see so the enemy attacks people so that they will not become what God wants them to become you know the pain that you have experienced when you were young some of them mostly they were made so that you will not become what you are supposed to become you know, some of the things that I take you to crush down your confidence. Some of you are called to preach, but what happened to you makes you feel like you do not qualify anymore to be a preacher. You don't have that standing anymore. So all of the things that came upon you were some sort of things that are going to hunt you so that when you have to be who you are, you won't have the boldness to come and speak. So all of the attacks that happens, it was so that you don't become the person you have to be so the trauma occurs so that you don't give out the best vision of yourself in instances of life and you keep being hurt and attacked and you you get drained up you don't even know who you are you know sometimes we we on about god i pray you send my man i you know i used to pray that way too until i i came across something that a man of god said that some of you are praying uh send him god but uh, did you pray for your future spouse? And when you're talking about the future husband, what he has to be. And I also had a reflection of, did I pray for myself? Because it's, we also want to have someone who's healed, a man that is going to love me. That's good. I want that. I know you want that, but we kind of like to just think about a man and not think that they, we can sabotage our own blessing with our own pain we did not want the pain to occur but we experienced the pain and now because we have not healed we're going to sabotage what was supposed to be a blessing so as we march we all about trying to pray to receive that man god wants to change us to be something he wants us to be 
He has intentions about each individual on earth. God has a plan for every one of us. And so the enemy attacked a lot of individuals when they were young, different kinds of pain with different kinds of mistakes they did, different kinds of things they are sorry about. Even some of the mistakes, some of the things were not more of what happened to you. Some of the th- some people, like you saw things happening, like you were, you were surrounded by evil. You know, when you are surrounded by evil and even the people you live with, you cannot count on them. When you want to become a better person, it affects you because you, you don't have anyone in the house to say this one, it motivates me to become a better person. It's not like some other house houses where you know that, yeah, maybe my uncle is not as nice, but my aunt, some families, you know that I'm just living here by grace, man. I don't know how I'm still here, but I, I'm not loved. I don't get this affection that I need. And so sometimes you, you don't even believe that there's love and that, 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 that wrong surroundings. And it may even happen when you may be growing in it. Maybe you are experiencing it even today. All of that is trying to shut what you are supposed to do because if you are surrounded by negative, negative environment, negative people, bad energy, people who don't speak right, you become like that if you are not careful. You know, mostly they talk about narcissistic traits. Those kind of people, they grow up in such an environment where they had somebody who was raising them up who had those kind of traits. And now, now they are like them, but they don't even know. They think this is how I am. You see, and all that bad behavior now is going to attack what you are supposed to be, is going to kill the chances of being happy in the relationship, is going to to chase away the man that you are supposed to be. You know, some of you do reflect and you do see that, yeah, I think I was the one why the relationship ended, you know, because the enemy is able to use your scars. If you're not, if you're not healing, he's going to use your scars to break what was supposed to be a blessing. And so you don't have to worry if that person is married now because you made some mistake, they, some mistakes and they fled what they just left you. God has a better plan and you're going to find the right person. We're going to pray at the end of this teaching and God is going to locate you the right person in your life. So... Point number two, pray for your character. It's important. Now, point one, you pray for your for your heart, your life to heal from all kind of trauma. You're going to surrender the traumas to God and then he will take care of you. Now you're going to pray for your character. God wants you to become someone. He has an idea of a person you have to be. Now, since you want to become someone's wife, that's a responsibility. Now you are an individual. You also need to be someone that God wants you you to be. So you have to start praying. God has an idea of who you have to be, how you are supposed to be behaving in this world. God has given us his word so that we can read the word and understand the kind of life that he wants us to live, like being shaped the way that he wants us to, to be. Like, you know, he's able to change us and he's able to redirect our lives. We can be a better person in this world, regardless of the pain that we suffered. We can be better. You see, I look at myself and I see how I changed because I prayed God to change my character. I was a a person who was angry. I would wake up in the morning angry and I would just make everyone upset because I'm angry. And so as you grow up and you spend time and you're growing up in the Lord and you pray and you allow God to work on you and to work on your character, shaping you as the person that you have to be. You see, because God has a lot of things that he wants to do on earth, but he wants to work more in our lives. If you can read John 15, you see that he's uh, interested in the fruit. You know, the fruit, you're talking about God wants to see love being manifested in us. But, you know, since the devil hijacked some of us, he used, he did that. We were hijacked, but we're free now. We're free now. We we were not loving people. We were kind of like toxic people, people who can just make your beautiful day dark it's not that people uh they they plan to be like that some of them they have even just yielded to to all of those things but you must understand that uh people who are hate 
hurt other people you only give people what you have if you are full of anger you're going to give them anger if you're full of love you're going to give them love so if we say we're going to break those generational curses and when it comes to relationship because in this in this community in this love path we are building healthy relationships it's gonna it's just it starts with us I said it is going to start with me and I just wanted to have this channel going on here on YouTube and on Spotify and Google Podcast and all of the streaming platforms that I we, 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 we are planning to add the channel in because we want to see change. You know, it's good to say I want someone who's going to love me, but are we going to love them? Because some of the things that are hindering the love that we want to to, to give is the pain, the pain. And you, you, you can't just wake up and say I'm going to love people. You won't even miss, you're going to make a mistake thinking you're doing the right thing. Okay, there was this guy, uh, I've noticed something. There was this guy who loved me. He said he loved me. And when he was talking to me, I just couldn't connect to this man. He, he tried hard to connect to me. And I didn't know much. Okay, so one time I noticed something about this guy. Is that he would call me early in the morning and he would call me hours. And then he will call me afternoon and, and, and long hours. I mean, I, I want to be busy. Okay, I do understand we say that we want love. And he was giving me the time. But I felt like he was just being too much. I want to have my own time. So I know some of you be saying, what is what bad? What is it? How is it that bad, a bad thing when a man is talking to you on the phone? When the man is available to you? Like sometimes you say you want a man to call you. But now you're complaining. There's a difference to, between um, talking to someone and when someone he wants to talk to you the whole day on the phone, on the phone. I have to be doing things. I have to be busy. You see? And then he was always, always, hours. And then one day I had to speak because I thought he was going to slow down. But the man didn't stop. He was just like, uh, everywhere he was calling me now and now and now and i'm like mm -mm, I, I can't i can't do this i want to be busy so if i want to be busy and he's always calling me and he gets upset when i want to um hang up the phone he will be just like now uh manipulate me to feel like yeah i don't see him i don't care okay i used to okay i, I would do I would respond to him. I would try to wait a little a bit talking to him. But I kept asking myself, if this man is on the phone this hours with me and he just want to talk to me this long hours, how am I going to be with him when I'm living with him? Will I be allowed to be with other people except for him? Because, you know, some people have abandonment issues so people who have abandonment issues are dealing with it differently you see uh some of them they don't give you they don't want you to be closer to them they just withdraw they don't want you to see when they feel like they start to love you they feel like they are becoming so much in love with you they they just withdraw they give themselves some space so that they will not get fond of you but this one had some abandonment issues. He later on told me about some of the things that he experienced when he was young. So I, it made a lot of sense. So I, I was able to understand that people don't, um, people don't respond to pain the same. That's how, that's true because I, I noticed myself as well that I was reacting differently when it comes to relationship with some of the things that I have been through. So instead of, um, so this man wanted to be more on me because he felt like he didn't get the love from one of his parents. And so he, he, he was trying to fight that to say he will not desert me. It was like he's trying to compete with his parent when he was in a relationship. This is some of the things that people are experiencing in life. They're trying to compete with their parent in their life. Don't compete with your mom. If you feel like your mom was not good enough in some other areas, surrender that to God. Pray that God will help you. Pray that God will help you to become better. If you will try to compete with your mom, if your mama didn't buy you enough presents and now you, you want to compete with your mom, you want to go and buy all of the extra presents to your kids because you want to prove that your mom 
uh, we should have just did this. You're going to abuse your kids because every time you go to the store, you're going to come with many toys. So I, 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 there was this instance as well. So there was this guy who said something like that. He's, there was a man who said to me, he grew up with that toys. He didn't have toys. So he's grown up now. He has a degree. He's, he's working. He's finding his kids. And so he had a problem. He had a problem when he was young. He didn't get toys. And so he's growing up. He's, he's planning in his heart. And he did, not, he did not have this conversation with his family. So he's growing up. He's planning that one day he's going to buy a toys. He's going to buy many toys. And so he, he was talking to me saying that I'm going to get my kids every toy they need. Every toy. And when he talks about these toys, he's always talking about coming with so many toys. Big ones and small ones. And lo- it, it, it sounds as if there is a flooded toys given to these kids. And the reason why he's giving so much toys is because when he was young, he did not get that those things. And so he's trying to commit, compete with his father. Maybe he's not even noticing. You cannot compete with your father because in this area, you think you are doing better. You are worsening and abusing your kids. Toys are not a bad thing. They're playing with those toys. But now you are buy, it's like you are buying the toys. Uh, it, it, so, there's so much the kids need to have some time out without even playing with these toys. They need to be going out. But now they have so much toys because you're competing with your father. You know, some other people have so much to, to experience. There was another man that I had a, a testimony about. They said that this man, when he was young, his father did not allow him to drink uh, so much soda. So when he had his house, he would buy a soda. If you visit in his house, he would give you a, 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 a glass and then by the time you just try to sip, he adds. There's no moment where you will just say you have finished your, your soda. Because when you just sip in, he adds. And they add, they add, they, they just ask him, why you keep refilling my glass? Because when you just when you are when you just when you just sip, you drink your soda, he refills it. He refill that, that means that it will you will not finish the soda. And now they ask him, he says, when he was young, he was not allowed. He was not allowed to drink so much soda. So he said to himself, I am going to be successful. I will drink enough soda. Now this is an abuse. And this man, this man of God said that in the house where they were sitting on the dinner table, the wife was said, the kids were said, but because he does not even notice this anymore because he's competing with his father. You might be trying to commit, you compete with your father in some other areas. You're going to mess up in other areas as well because you're going to have, you're going to make mistakes. When we say that, even now we're praying for, we're praying for ourselves being preparing for marriage. You must also understand that we are not going to be perfect. We're going to have some mistakes. Even when we pray for change and growth, they, they, we will have mistakes. That's how it is. But if you want to compete with your mom, you're going to have so many errors in your life where you have not been, been fixed by God because you are fighting. You are trying to fix things with your, with your own strength. The Bible says that not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. You want to become a better mom, a better father, a better wife, a better husband, don't try to compete with your parents, with your aunt, with your uncle. Just pray, God, I need to become a better person. Walk on my character. You know, you cannot compete with, with other people, with their mistakes. Because this problem that this man experienced, he did not have enough soda. That's painful. Because you, you can see that this, 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 this child suffered when he was, this, this part of him of neglect and this part of him that did not have enough soda is fighting in this grown man. He's an old man, but he still wants to fight for that chance of drinking a soda. It's not, as, it's not even a joke is said because there are things that we experienced when we were young. And because we did not get the help that we need, now we are trying to defend ourselves to wrong people. People are fighting battles with us they don't even know exist. We're just fighting with ourselves. And when we see something and hear something that sounds like that aunt who fought me, a voice, anything sound like that person who said to me something when I was young, I feel like I got to be in a defensive mode. And then I got, I, then I begin to destroy everything. You find that this person was not even trying to abuse you. They were just having a conversation. So it's important to, to pray and allow God 
and allow God. So uh, I see it looks like my, I think I'm going to make another, um, another, another recording so it doesn't become too long. Uh, so stay tuned. God bless you. Bye.